So I'm trying this new fad called jogging. I believe it's pronounced jogging. Maybe jogging with a soft J, but apparently you just go out and run for extended periods of time. It's wild. Hi there, Coach Chase Candy of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about percentage of your weekly mileage as it pertains to your longest long run, or what type of long run you might be putting in uh, once per week or once every 10 days, uh, what percentage that is, and what kind of an upper limit might be for a long run, depending on lots of factors like your average weekly mileage, your age, your injury history, and what type of event you're training for. Now, I know on here we got a lot of diversity, any surface, any distance. We got high school age kids training for the mile, 1600 or 5K. We've got people that are in their 60s and 70s doing 100 mile ultra marathons and anything in between, right? Road marathons, half marathons, 10Ks, and varying levels of experience. So. That's the whole idea of this talk is that there is no set two hour rule or 25% of your weekly mileage is the cap for your long run, right? Because uh, it's going to vary. If you're doing a longer event and you're a more experienced runner, generally you want to focus more of an emphasis on a long run and it could be a 25 or 30% of your weekly mileage all in one long run or even longer if you're an ultra marathon runner. Could even be time on feet, we'll get to that in a bit. Likewise, if you're a younger runner or you're less experienced or you're just lower mileage in general, you got more of a speed focus maybe, and you're training for a 5K or 1600 meters, you're not gonna have as much emphasis on getting in a super long, long run. Generally, aerobic training will help you, especially in a 5K, uh, and if you're getting up over 20% of your weekly mileage as a dedicated long run, that's usually pretty good, but it depends on how much weekly mileage you're putting in. Now, the big factor, of course, is staying healthy so you can train and not uh, be consistent, right? Because that's what's going to give you the big improvements, the big aerobic base, consistency over time, running with good form, not getting injured or sick or overtrained, things like that. So it's an individual thing. It's an individual thing. So you have to consider how long have I been running? What has my highest weekly mileage been in a seven day total uh, in my life? But not only that, but how much have you averaged that over a course of several months or several weeks or even over the course of several years, right? Your lifetime mileage base as well as your chronological age, your age when you started running, how many years you've been training or getting back into running and what your susceptibility is to injury, right? Some people say, oh, well, I got up to 50 miles a week, 80K a week, but then I got hurt. I got an overuse injury. So that's no good. You got to be careful with building up your mileage. So it's not just these mileage numbers and totals. There's no concrete rule that says, oh, well, if you keep your long run under 25% of your weekly total, then uh, you're going to be okay because it's still going to be a big stress. So, you know, Jack Daniels Distance Running Formula, first edition book, citing that again. General training principles is that you would never do more than really much more than 30% or one third of your weekly mileage as a single day long long run. So for example, if you're running 100 kilometers a week, about 60 miles a week, I know it's 62 miles, but 60 miles a week, 100K a week, you wouldn't do over a, a 20 mile long run or a 32K long run, generally. But in our sagerunning.com marathon, BQ marathon training plan, we do have some weeks in there where you're getting up to maybe to 60, 70 miles a week and we have a 20 mile long run. So yeah, it's flirting with around that 30% of your weekly mileage in a single long run. And that is a marathon training focus plan. Likewise, if you're an ultra marathon runner, a lot of ultra marathon runners, you're training for this 100 mile event or 100K event, you better put in some long, long runs, some big time on your feet. Uh, but generally with those, you're in the mountains and trails and you're going up a lot of vertical. So you might do a four or five hour long run but it was only like 12 miles, technical trails too. So that's kind of a difference too, we go by time. And Jack Daniels would also limit two and a half hours as the upper limit for time, but he's talking more about road marathon runners who are faster, but also road marathon runners that are focusing on the marathon as their longest event, not ultra marathon, right? So there's no magical number at two hours or two and a half hours. There's no magical cap at a 20 mile long run necessarily, 
or there's no magical cap at 25% of your weekly mileage or weekly volume. Now, back to the basics, beginner plans, oversimplified plans in my opinion, we look at something like Runner's World, I think it was, that came out with this train three days a week, you only have to run three days a week, you're only training three days a week, and you'll be able to do a marathon, finish your first marathon. Great goal, by the way, it's a great accomplishment, I'm not knocking that. I will say, though, if you're only training, if you're only running three days a week, you're probably not reaching your full potential in the marathon. If you just want to finish a marathon, knock it off the bucket list, uh, you know, get to the, the start, finish line, and starting line, one piece, you know, it's, it's something you could definitely do on three days a week of training only. The problem with that is I think it sells people short and it's also kind of a risk for injury and I'll tell you why. Because every day is a quality day, first of all. So, you know, one day it would be like a tempo run, 20 minute, 30 minute, 40 minute tempo threshold type of workout. Then you take a day totally off. Then the next day would be Yazo 800s or something on the track, 10 times 800, all intensity, right? Uh, which is good, it's good to have the mix of these workouts. And then you take a couple days off and then your big focus would be this weekend long run where you go out and do 15 miles or something like that. So it's, it's, it's extreme is what it is, almost like crash training we'd call it. Uh, and you know, those elements, a long run, a tempo run, a track interval session, those are all very good in a marathon training plan. It's just usually most people that would be doing advanced workouts would also have a bunch of easy pace mileage days in between and they'd be upping their weekly mileage to kind of handle the stress of that long run. Now the focus is that long run because in the runner's world, three day a week plan, maybe you're doing a 30 mile week, 50K a week, but that long run gets up to like 15 miles maybe. I don't know exa the exact numbers on it, but it was a pretty high percentage of your weekly mileage. So think about that. If you're doing 30 miles a week, 50K a week, your weekend long run is 15 miles, 25K about, 24K that's like 50% of your weekly mileage all in one day in one run. That's a big day, right? Now, some ultra marathon runners, like I said, they do that. We do the ex extremes in ultra marathons, right? You don't train for a 100 mile ultra by doing 80 mile long runs in practice, really. No, you just, you go out there and you just go and try to do 100 miles all at once. So that's kind of extreme. But for someone looking to do a good marathon, if you're doing a 15 mile long run on the weekend, generally it's better to be running much higher mileage. 50 miles a week, 80K a week. Even, like I said, with our Sage Running BQ Marathon training plan, got a lot of people to run sub three or qualify for Boston uh, in their age group. You know, it gets up over 100K a week, over 60 miles a week, and the long runs get up over 20 miles a week or 32K a week. And we even advocate for really advanced marathon training plans to people get up to like 22 miles in their long run as a really big day. Now, you know, unless you're running 100 miles a week, that's going to be over 25% of your weekly mileage all in one big long run. So you do have to be careful. And we don't say you have to do this every weekend or once every seven days. There's some shorter long runs, medium length long runs, and then we hit some peak high long runs where we're going over 20 miles, 32K. That is a good distance if you're into advanced road marathon training, though, and you want to reach your full potential. But again, it has to be supported by consistent higher mileage over time. Back to that aerobic base, adding a lot of easy miles, easy pace mileage, and that 80-20 rule talk I did about. You can check all these out in my playlist. I'll link to it in the description below, as well as at the end of this video. Um, that is what you have to take into account, as well as your injury history. Don't want to get injured, have to slowly build up. So the whole idea of, of doing a big, huge long run all at once is an injury risk. If it's way, way over your percent of weekly mileage, it would be better to just be more consistent instead of just training three days a week and running three days a week, r maybe thinking about running four or five days a week and kind of adding in some easy mileage to get you those aerobic benefits that you would try to get uh, in a long run anyway. Now. There's some good aerobic adaptations that happen after about 90 minutes into a long run, right? You get your, your slow twitch muscle fibers start getting kind of tired because you're running a pretty steady, slowish pace maybe. And so then some of your fast twitch muscle fibers start kicking in to get you going. And that's a good stimulus because that could really help your efficiency uh, or running economy and what pace you're able to hold over longer periods of time. So if you're training for a race over 90 minutes, that's a really good benefit to have. You also are training your fat burning capacity. Uh, you're running low on glycogen, your carbohydrate, stored up carbohydrate uh, in your muscles and liver mainly, and you're tapping into some of your, your body fat stores, right? 
uh, especially if you're not chugging down a bunch of Red Bull and, and Coke the whole time during the long run, right? You do want to practice fuel and hydration, that's a whole other talk. But, uh, you know, if you're burning fat more efficiently, you're kind of signaling your mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, to also just be more efficient and really good blood flow. So, you know, 90 minutes, that's a generally a, a good long run for people. And Jack Daniels, you know, the two and a half hour barrier, the whole idea with that was that, say you're training for a three hour marathon, you definitely probably want to do some long runs over two hours, right? You got to run a BQ, you got to run a, a 310 or a 305 or a sub three hour full road marathon. You probably want to know what it feels like in training to go well over two hours. Do you have to go over two hours and 30 minutes though? Not necessarily, right? You might go up to, you know, 20 mile long run, 22 mile long run, but it all depends on the quality, uh, how fast you do that long run. And again, at our sagerunning.com training plans, so this is a business plug, a lot of our long runs are very key workouts uh, where you're actually doing some intensity and threshold or up-tempo stuff and changing the pace a bit. It's not just this easy slog where you're just going through the motions, right? Because you're going to be pushing and to run a, a low three-hour marathon, right? So that's just one example. Likewise, if you're training for a half marathon or you're 5K, 10K or you're a high school kid training for a track, you're right, the, the 1600 meters, Maybe you're only getting up to that 90 minute mark and maybe you're only doing a 10 or 12 mile, 18, 20 K uh, type of long run because your, your weekly mileage is lower and there doesn't need to be as much of an emphasis on a long run. So that's my whole spiel and talk kind of on the idea of why your long run, what percentage of, of your weekly mileage it really could be and that it should vary and it doesn't always have to follow a seven day cycle it could be on a 10 day cycle or every other 14 day cycle every other week right you don't always do a super long long run every weekend or whenever you have time uh, so it could vary quite a bit likewise pete fitzinger advanced marathon training plans sometimes you have a midweek medium length long run so you're getting in these longer efforts uh, but then you're also getting in super long efforts a couple times during your training cycle, be it 12 weeks or 16 weeks or even 20 weeks. And it's something you want to build up to. It's something you want to build up to. It's something that's hard. A long run's generally pretty hard. It's a long time. But you have to look at it in terms of, you know, how many steps are you taking? How much time are you out there? If you're an ultra trail runner, how much vert or climbing are you putting in? Vertical gain, right? It's a big stress. Uh, you know, what are the weather conditions like? Did you get really dehydrated? Are you sweating a lot? fuel up with my spring energy that's a inner code sage for a discount uh, check out their products sponsor plug i digress uh thank you so much for all your support on here hope you're staying healthy and safe out there uh really wishing you the best in your running as well as building your aerobic base and being smart about it uh because we want to reduce that risk for injury we want you to enjoy that sport but also to stay healthy uh mentally and physically and get in really good shape aerobically so thank you so much thanks to the patreon supporters for really making this possible thanks to the title sponsor hoka one one for keeping the dream alive again subscribe on here for more of these types of videos check out my playlist as well as our training plans coach sandy and i sell any service any distance sagerunning.com See you next time.